so so you can see Stan and Brigitte. This is a picture from your. Now, when was this? Was this New Year's Eve after you had already been married? Yes, this was New Year's Eve. I think even before we were married, the okay. first New Year's Eve in Germany in the Kurhaus, <laughs> right. which is a very fancy old building. And we had a fa fabulous dinner and we were dancing together. Okay, this has been quite a process, this yes. period of six years that, that I've been, mm. uh, began working with Stan. And, and in the course of that time, um, you came back into his life, Brigitta, mm -hmm. and, and through your involving me in your circle of friends, um, I was able to meet such amazing people. And it began with this celebration of your wedding. And um, Ralph Metzner was there, Michael Harner was there, his wife, Sandra Harner, um, Bobo, there were uh, Betsy um, Gordon hosted the event with her husband, JB. Also, we had Roger Walsh and Francis Vaughn. We had Jake Cornfield and uh, Richard uh, Tarnas and his wife, Yvonne. Rick, right. And you. <laughs> and, and, I mean, and John Buchanan, who became yes, our Buchanan, executive yeah. producer. And Paul. Paul. Yes. And no, he wasn't there. Paul was not there. Your brother was oh, no, not was there, not. Stan. But um, <laughs> he came later. Was L, L and L, yeah. yeah, that came, yeah. yeah that and was and so it was this, this amazing party with such incredible mm. people. And, mm. and they became uh, a core group that supported this mm. project all the way through. Mm. And, um, and Jack Cornfield and um, Ralph and Rick stayed to watch our first you know, 20 minutes of the movie. And, mm -hmm. and they, the, the feedback they got was, we need some background on who Stan is. If you go straight into the perinatal matrices, you're going to freak people out. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so we had to go back and do some history. And, um, mm -hmm. and Rick Tarnas ended up becoming my advisor for right. two independent projects to verify the, you know, structure and provide uh, footage that I didn't know existed of the Flora story. And, and then in the course of making this movie, um, we lost some, you lost some dear friends and the world lost some amazing um, mm -hmm. elders. We lost um, Ralph Metzner. We lost Francis Vaughn, um, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Harner, you know, so there mm -hmm. were, there were a series of, of, um, great wisdom holders who passed. And that was sad. Uh, but the great thing was to get them all together and capture the jokes, the stories uh, between them. It was just so beautiful. And, and, uh, and then the next thing I remember is we went to Prague. I joined you in Prague in 2017 mm -hmm. for the big conference there. And- um, yes. And I put it into the movie. There were, what, 3,500 people in the audience applauding Stan as he, mm -hmm. I believe he, he opened it and closed it. Mm -hmm. And Brigitte joined him on stage. It was really quite beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, we had our talks, right, on art. Both, both of us, I was talking on my art and Stan was talking on his art, which was a, a first time. No, it was a mm -hmm. premiere. Yeah. <laughs> That was fun. That was really nice. And there was a, an exhibition, an art exhibition. Oh, yeah. And and you were there. You were filming and uh, you were just... We have the wonderful cat there. Yes. This, uh, this, <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite picture. I want to see that in this. <laughs> I know. We, it was it was Giger's art and uh, it was a cat and you... you you asked me to you know, <laughs> stand next to it. And so I, I did my version of the picture. Yeah. You look like the cat. It's so sweet. I love that picture. That's yeah. one of my favorite. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you for asking me to include that. Um, uh, but, well, we, we also, we have some, we had some fun on the way, right? Oh, Susan? I mean, it was hard work. I mean, I, I'm so impressed how much work you did and how much work it is to make such a movie. And it's, it's so much bureaucracy and so much organization. I mean, it's creativity, but also it's so much, so much work, you know, and uh, well, lots of money. You have to find money and 
Uh, I mean, we, we didn't have a, anybody, we didn't really have a huge budget or anything. We had, we had to ask our poor friends all the time to give us some money, which was... Mm -hmm. well, we said you should, you should get a PhD for that, you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell that to CIIS, you know, to let those folks know honorary PhD would be very well appreciated. Yes, uh, yes. I want to say that, you know, way in the very beginning, Stan, you and I um, recorded what we thought might be a pitch video. We were going to do like a GoFundMe campaign. And, mm -hmm. um, and I have a moment of that that I'm going to uh, share. Oh, no, right. It's, That's it's, cool. It's pretty funny because you rehearsed this amazing speech. And then you turned and, and said it to me. Susan, I'd like to thank you very much for all the energy, the time, the love that went into this project. Uh, I don't see it as a personal tribute you know, to me and my life, my, my work. I see it uh, primarily as an extraordinarily powerful tool to communicate a very important message. Um, I'm now 85 years old and I spent uh, 60 years of this time. Yeah, you'd be talking uh, to the camera. 60 time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're five. rehearsing. <laughs> yes, sorry. Okay. That's been six. Yeah, it was blurry because I didn't have a real camera person. It was my friend and oh. she did the wrong thing. But mm -hmm. the other thing that we did that if this was sort of a gift to you guys was the um, solstice. Or no, oh, the yes. eclipse, the solar the eclipse. eclipse, the solar eclipse. Yeah. The solar you, invited, eclipse. you invited us to Oregon and you set up this fantastic event in the countryside with these beautiful people. And it was this amazing kind of shamanic gathering. <laughs> it was really, that was really cool. Huh? We really mm. loved it. Huh? Stan really loved it too. Chair. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I remember, I don't know how much we should put in this, but uh, you know, marijuana is <laughs> legal in Oregon and two of the people that were coming, uh, one of, he's a cultivator. And so uh, he mm. said, what can I offer? And I said, well, maybe bring some marijuana. He showed up with a mm. pound. It was like a garbage bag of marijuana. <laughs> and I'm going, what am I going to do with this? And I said, why don't you just walk around the circle and offer it? And so everybody took a bud, you know, like mm. that was pretty funny. And there were some mushrooms circling. Mm -hmm. Um, so they were great, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and those are now legal for therapeutic use mm -hmm. in the state of Oregon, and all Schedule no. One substances are no longer um, criminal. They've been decriminalized that's great. in that's Oregon. Great. Yeah, that's great. So no, but, it was a very powerful experience. I mean, to see that happen, no? the yeah. total eclipse mm -hmm. was it, amazing. It, it was, yeah, we have a little movie, you know, well, that I think that's up mm -hmm. there somewhere. But anyway, that was really something. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then we had the big screening for the MAPS um, book launch, where they yeah, that was. But before that, before that, we had a couple of parties. Parties. <laughs> parties. <laughs> you know, we are with our transpersonal friends. I've actually known these for 35 years myself because when I was a work scholar and came to Esalen in 86, uh, there were the, mon the month long seminars and they were the guest faculty. So it was really amazing to, to meet them again, you know, and uh, to reconnect on, on, on that level now. So, so Actually, we have a fun photo with Jack Cornfield, with Stan and I and Jack, and then we have the same photo 30 years later, yeah. so the be before, after. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, well, we somehow decided, let's have some fun, you know, and so we created the first costume party, and uh, it, was, uh, it was mandatory to come in a costume. You could not come in without a costume. So what was the theme for Lederhosen? What was that theme? Well, there, no, there was no theme. The first okay. one was no theme. It was okay. just a costume party. And uh, so we thought, of, you know, what, what should we wear? You know, it's a, and so we thought, I said, well, Stan, uh, the American people tend to think that all Germans are Bavarians. And so let's <laughs> let's fulfill the prejudice here. Let's become Bavarians, you know. So I I ordered for him like an Oktoberfest hat and fake lederhosen and for me dirndl, which I would never wear, you know, 
anyways and i thought i'll have to i have to lighten it up a little bit by wearing some antlers this is, gets a bit shamanic and we decorated the house you know with pretzels and and bavarian flags and uh, and then so so we made it a bavarian event well, and, and the friends came with the costumes you know I actually found out that that uh, way back, you know, when I have uh, from one of the LSD sessions, that I had the experience of being a Bavarian guy yeah. uh, in some kind of building Landler, you know, yeah. so the dancing <laughs> there, and I fall on the floor. But, yeah, on the floor. The floor it smells floor like beer. Of, yeah, beer. Hmm? It smelled like beer and so on. Yeah, there Cigarette were a lot of marks. cigarettes and stuff like that, <laughs> and I started dying on the floor, you know, in in Bavaria. Oh, well, and I had I had a mescaline experience where I turned into a Bavarian. So we have some, you know, <laughs> experiences. And so I I think Stan was the cutest Bavarian ever. He he looked so funny, so natural actually. Yes. <laughs> so. Well, and so this is so there was another party. I believe it was yes. Noah's Ark, and we started a tradition. We thought we thought everybody liked it so much. Let's create a tradition of of uh, costume parties. And so we thought, oh, let's have a motto, you know. And the next one, we said it's a, uh, it's Noah's Ark. And it, um, originally, we wanted to hire a ship and go on on a boat, oh. <laughs> but that it turned out to be, you know, too complicated. And and also some elders needed to go home. To and and anyway, so we said we do it in the house. So we make the house the ark, and the people came as animals. And we wanted so, to do it on the bay. Yeah. yeah. But it was they have these things and we go around they you know yeah, you have a, you have a, boat, a yeah. dinner there yeah well it, it was a little too much but anyway so we made the house the ark and actually susan you have a nice picture with you with stan yes a, yes a bee or something something i came like as that, a right? bee a bumblebee so cute so well cute. And, and then you two started the night as a <laughs> pair of penguins and then you yeah. disappeared. And when you came back, you were a pair of jaguars or leopards. Yeah. I don't. And that was some outfit, Stan. That was some <laughs> outfit. Yeah. That was so hilarious. That was really funny. Was... Well, I have a jaguar book. The book. You know. book. I know. I love the jaguar. So I, I didn't that's... picture that jaguar when I read the book, though. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was the cute, again, the cutest jaguar. I mean, oh. so, so, so cool and so nice. And then the and last so, one was. Yes. Well, Kevin. They're, they're getting more hilarious every time. This was heaven and hell. So <laughs> we had a bunch of angels and other characters coming and it was really, really great too. And so, you know, somebody asked me at one point, what was the most um, surprising thing in your course of working with Stan and Brigitte? And I said, I think it was the, the parties. It was the, it was the costumes. I didn't expect that. That was really nothing I ever expected to see. And it was such a joy to see everybody have such a great time and, and yes. just relax. And I was really good at filming the first few, but by the last one, I apologize. I was just too, oh, no. I was so enjoying the conversation <laughs> with everybody. We have a little, we have a little bit of that. Yeah, we have a yeah. little bit, but again, it's not about, not really about showing, it's just maybe transporting the spirit of joy and celebration. And also it's a, many things i love about stan but uh, but what i really love is is that he's so relaxed and and he just is, is you can do any fun with him we like we love we have a hilarious humor and so we are so happy about this this crowd of, of friends that have the same and even enjoy it very much you know so and well so that's well we were working on the next one it's a little bit complicated since yeah. we're in this Right yeah, I said that time. in memorial, you know, uh, I had to get from Brigitte all the funny, uh, really bizarre uh, fixtures that I have uh, over the years, you know. Yeah, well, you know, we could do a naked version on Zoom and uh, everybody yeah. could be naked from, from the chest up, you know, so that, or whatever. We wouldn't know. Well, was they would, uh, that was our idea for the next party would be maybe Adam and Eve. So let's see what that would be like. Leaves, just well-placed leaves. Well, there's lots of place for creativity. And so we <laughs> hope we'll, we we'll can get together again in person. It gets more fun in person. It's yeah. really nice. 
So, well, you know, and, and Stan, I have to say um, that I don't know when we began making this movie that we would, that the timing would be such with this COVID and um, this huge moment of transition of our species and the future on this planet. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, you know, the timing was just meant to be that here we are with something mm -hmm. now that people can access. They can start to change their understanding of what reality is. They have a guide for how to approach um, deeper exploration, whether it's through the breath work or through um, psychedelic therapies, but they, they're, they're being given a framework so that what they discover on the inner journey can be held in a greater context so that mm -hmm. they can imagine another way of being on this mm -hmm. planet and living together. Mm -hmm. And so I am so thankful and even COVID that got us to show every one of our interviews over the course of the mm -hmm. summer, it's an education. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and the website mm -hmm. has that, all of it's there. Mm -hmm. and, and so I feel what a gift that um, I feel so honored that I was able to uh, work with you both and have access to these amazing people. And Rick mm -hmm. at CIIS, mm -hmm. any question, mm -hmm. who should tell me about this? And then mm -hmm. he would always give me a wonderful name. And then the mm -hmm. people who worked with you during your years at Esalen came through. And oh, Esalen. Esalen. Yeah. We went yes, to yes, Esalen. Yes. We went to wow. Esalen. And it was your, mm -hmm. your time together there as co teachers instead of teacher mm -hmm. and student, which was really mm -hmm. amazing and, and filming there. So mm -hmm. what I, I just think, you know, this has been an incredible journey and a, and a great mm -hmm. gift. And mm -hmm. I'm so happy to have met you and worked with you. And I have to say, Stan, I'm learning archetypal astrology. And when I put our charts <laughs> together, like a bi wheel, that's where my natal is inside and I'm explaining mm -hmm. it for other mm -hmm. people. It's also your son is like, putting light in it and projecting it that's projecting a film it. you yeah. know so. yeah and uh, mm. and uh, yeah and there was a whole the whole timing was really perfect I mean Stan had that stroke two and a half years ago and it affected the speech center no no paralyzed no uh, the mind is totally clear but when the stroke happened everything was written the book was basically finished and all the shift network, all the videos had been recorded and everything that needed to be recorded for, for the film was done too. So, so that was very, very, we were so lucky, you know, that this was all, all done. I mean, there was still work to complete the film and the book and so on. And so that's when we had uh, the, uh, the book launch, yeah, and the film launch in San Francisco. Yes. That was in... August that was interesting, 19, yeah. 19. That, that yeah. was another thing in between. Yes, yeah. and that, yeah. was the, that was in August 2019, a really huge gathering of people. How many people were there? 750. Remember? All right, 750. 750. And we did a big screening of the movie yes. and we presented the book. Yeah, so. yeah. No, it was, it, and then it was just a few days after, I think, that mm -hmm. you were going to have a, the surgery on your back and they took you off the blood thinner. No, no, and, no, 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 no. It was the stroke was before. Oh, that's right. 2018 was the stroke and yeah, the book launch was 2019. Yes. yes. Right. You screw it, screwed it up, you know, I never got it. Yeah. No. I know. Well, wow. So but I came with stroke and my, my in back on the top, you know. <laughs> The, instead of a back operation, you had a stroke because they took away your blood thinners without substitute. No. So well, that was a bummer, but... But, but you know, the, we were, the positive, at least, is that uh, unlike other um, incredibly wise and transformational people, you, you have a legacy um, that you speak for yourself so that it's your words, it's you interpreting, mm -hmm. you participated mm -hmm. in the authenticity, uh, authenticity of, mm -hmm. of all of our reenactments so that there's no question that this represents you accurately. Yes. And so it's not like 
Rudolf mm. Steiner or somebody else or Jung, you know, mm. where they're going to read it and interpret it and people are going to mm. have opinions. You got mm. to express it directly. Right. It directly. And right. so this that's, is. That's true. Yeah. That's so great that it's it's all recorded and, and uh, that's We sometimes so talk great. about the positive thing, you know, mm. that we ended up uh, together, you know, otherwise we would be going, you know, back yeah. and forth. To... No, we're always together. Yeah. <laughs> that's so nice. Yeah, but that was, that was difficult. You were, you were Yeah, to go. we live on two continents and now we are just always together, which is really nice. Yeah. I really... I'm really so impressed how you have done that. You have been really in service of, of the truth and of Stan. I mean, there was no ego in this. You were just really, you wanted to know, you just wanted to transport everything correctly. And so I, I, I really saw your pure heart mm. uh, in doing this, you know, and I really appreciate that so much. We both appreciate it so much. And uh and also, the, uh, you also were walk your talk. I mean, you were going on that inner journey and do it. And I, one of one of one a scene in the movie I really love when you show it, that you drank ayahuasca and it though it wasn't enough, and you kept, you know, you're you're just no shit. I mean, you you don't 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 mind making fool of yourself and even admit it. That's so sweet, you know. And then. And I think it's so important to, first of all, to do what, you, what you're talking about. So, so you're not separated from a separate reporter, but you're really doing it. And um, you, have, you have made such, such a, a way during this time. And um, also you help, help, I think it helps to show your own process in this and also to really show that psychedelics, um, that they're not cookies. I mean, this is really serious stuff, you know, and uh, the very powerful tools and you, you show that. And so so really want to thank you for, for doing it this way, you know, it's really, really beautiful. So And we so both much. love you. We love Aww. you. You've yeah, really become good. so such dear yeah. friend to us. So well, uh, it's really, and, that, that was part of it, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, and again, you know, thank you, Brigitte. That's very sweet. And I love you both so much. And what, true. <laughs> what I got out of it, what I got out of it was because of what I learned from you, Stan, because of, of you, the example mm -hmm. that you set, I had the courage to just dive in to, mm -hmm. you know, and again, let's get back to little archetypal astrology. This was Pluto, Saturn opposing my sun. Um, mm -hmm. It began as the Saturn return, and then it became mm -hmm. opposing the sun. And so it was endless death rebirth, endless. I mean, it was all death rebirth. The entire thing was death rebirth. And I love those, too, you know. Well, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> that's the name of the game. <laughs> well, and so I felt like, I felt like, you know, something got um, shattered. And what was shattered was a false identification as a physical being that yes, I'm in a body, but I am spirit. And the mm -hmm. spirit is what is, you know, the essential nature. And mm -hmm. so no matter what happens, I'm fine. And, and it, it gave me a sense of humility and a sense of compassion and understanding. Mm -hmm. And when you break through the personal, then you can go into the collective and you begin mm -hmm. to understand the nature mm -hmm. of suffering mm -hmm. that and confusion mm -hmm. that people are facing. And then the idea that there's always going to be something that it's never going to be perfect, that we're here in this physical world, as you said, and that I made a point of it in the movie that you can't just have good. It's, it's always going to be equal parts. And, and it's when you're able to be connected to that higher sense of self mm -hmm. that you can live with this you know these two energies and and find peace and i believe that's what i've gotten out of this mm -hmm. and um Wonderful. yeah mm -hmm. so Great. thank you <laughs> so i have a last question um, um we uh, you we, when we discussed what you would do different in the film now uh, you were mentioning that from you gathered so much understanding about Stan's work and, and the development and so on, and that you would 
would right now would add the perspective of the archetypes that uh, that Stan was saying. Uh, he exactly he has changed for himself over the years. So you know exactly. what's now? It's this. It's a uh, uh, Rick's uh, book, which is going to be, or the feeling would be great. Yes. Well, Rick. It's, uh, it's all about archetypes, you know. Rick. And the Rick wrote an epilogue in the way of the psychonaut mm -hmm. volumes one and mm -hmm. two mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we read that in the course of our archetypal astrology course that i'm mm -hmm. currently taking at cis and when i read that it's exactly what you're saying in this 50 something minute in-depth um, interview where i was saying what's an archetype what's the psyche mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. went so deep into these things and that so in fact, the perinatal matrices, yes, they impact us, they shape us, mm -hmm. they, they mm -hmm. set us up for a certain path that we need to navigate to grow as individuals, mm -hmm. but it's the archetypes that determine that experience. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the, you know, it's that, that step back. It's that idea mm -hmm. that it's, it's a bigger picture that is shaping our journey on mm -hmm. this planet. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. is the thing that I wish I had put in the movie. <laughs> so, no, no, really Rick's, Rick's movie, it's really like complement to it, you know? Yes, yes, Changing of the Gods, which will be on. Yes, yeah. that's coming too, yeah. So, but anyway, you know, this is, this is why uh, a movie is never done because well yeah i mean it's when yeah, once but, you're finished but, something yeah. else is coming up and you could redo it so so we, I, we could have did something but we already had it you know had, had the, mm -hmm. the whole ideas in it yeah well we'll see what we do but, but we mention it now that's yes. for sure we'll see. Yeah. and i would also like to mention a last thing is that many things have have happened in the in the last couple of months and years and uh uh, of course, the pandemic, and I mean the 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 good the benefit of this pandemic is that we were forced to not go to the movies, but to to broadcast things in the in the internet. And I think may, probably we have reached many more people that way than we would have reached with physical events, you know. And the the other mm -hmm. thing that happened uh, during the last year up to up to a year ago started that uh, something else wanted to really wanted to emerge and uh, we were recreating the new training the graph legacy training when you were mentioning Stan's legacy so that's that's also an, an, a new training representing Stan's legacy all over the world yeah, and they can, can learn to work uh, you know with all kinds of um, inner, inner states uh, holotropic states and it could be breath work it could be with dying people or or for spiritual emergencies and eventually in this uh, huge psychedelic renaissance that's happening uh, internationally especially in the states and uh, in the uh, Canada, South America, and uh, probably Czech Republic coming. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a, a, a huge need for qualified, uh, in-depth trained uh, psychedelic sitters. So that's also where this training, what this training is for, for people who, mm -hmm. who can use that that way. So then you also put that uh, that uh, context for the movie mm -hmm. into this large picture about mm -hmm. the planet and uh, the, vi the virus, yes, you know, yes. that, that, not the virus, but, but the planet. Well, the, the, the Corona, you know, and, mm -hmm. but there is another very, very big thing, which is uh, the situation of uh, United States, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the uh, Pluto, you know, Yes, Pluto return. And this, this mm -hmm. is, and this is now probably complete the death rebirth of, of uh, America, whatever yes. we come out of, it's going to be very different. And, mm -hmm. And uh, Trump, you know, so all the whole thing as well. I mean, this is a big thing, you know. Well, we hope something he, is really not come out he's of destroying, it. literally destroying America, you know. Yes. Threatening, threatening. Yes, and and so what what comes forward is is there are those individuals who do believe in the purpose of our democracy, and they are stepping beyond their affiliation with party to represent the role that they accepted. And that is happening at the same time that you have people trying to tear away at it. So it's a very, very interesting experience and the virus raging through this country. 
Um, which is hard today. It's a quarter of a million American people dead from the virus, 250,000. I mean, this is just so... Horrible. It's like the, the Second World War, you know? More, more than the Second World more, War. More than the Second World War. Wow. More than the Second World War and 160,000 cases a day, hospitals full. Some people Uncredible. still don't believe it. People who do believe in it don't care. You know, it's like, if I die, I die. And so there really is this death rebirth energy in this country right oh, now. Oh yeah, definitely. Every, like around, around the world, this virus is, a, you know, brings out so much truth. Yeah. And it's, a, it's very powerful. It's related to breath, to breathing. Yeah. And it's about death, death uh, and life, you know. So very intense times. And we really, really, really hope that something good is going to come out of it. It's a big scenario, you know. Yeah. It's a big scenario. And Rick says it so beautifully in the movie where he says, you can't have a, a, a fake death rebirth. Yeah. <laughs> you, really, you really have to believe that yes. this is it. Well, right. You're in it. And so, so we, we really you know, believe it's important in this time. It's always important, especially in this time, to do the inner work, the strong inner holotropic work. Uh, because there eventually there is no difference between inside and outside and we all can, can, can contribute to this uh, in our personal transformation uh, to, to have a connection with the out, outside world that we all share. So and the, the planet which, which is in trouble in general, humanity is in trouble. So that would be our message to everybody watching this, right? To do, to do as much uh, good, good and deep inner work as possible. So. This is completely off the track, but uh, we talked with uh, Becca uh, last night, mm -hmm. and she is she is now going with us for the for the holotropic breath work for the training. She wants to be part she for the be, training. She will be a teacher in the training. Oh, wonderful! So she so she would be Archetypal in the she would be in the, in the, in uh, the, the whole time, you know, uh, and helping training. helping with the um, with the archetypes with the, with the breath work. So important, Stan. It's so important yes. because, you know, it, it. I am struggling. I every, you know, depending on the news, I'm like, you know, one day I want to go out and buy an AR-15 and drive over to Michigan and and kill everybody, you know. And and then the next day, I'm like connected to the heavens and feel the beauty of the universe and everything's working mm -hmm. its way through. So it depends on the day. I'm just getting, you know, back and <laughs> yeah. forth. And uh, to have some understanding of these forces mm. that are at yes. work and mm. to recognize mm. I'm not the only one feeling this. Mm. And, yeah. and it's well, if, you have the, if you have the Saturn there, like I do with, the, you know, with the Pluto, uh, Jupiter, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, I, asked the, I have still the Uranus, you know, to the yes. to, uh, T square, the T square. Scale, yeah. Well, that's the breakthrough, you know, but... Uh, but just Stan is always saying, he's always waiting until his Jupiter is kicking in when we're in trouble. And we right? got it now. We got it. Some interesting things like the last few, few Interesting few days, things yeah. are happening, yes. Wonderful. So. Well, we should wrap this up. I love you both All right. so Very much. Bye-bye, Susan. Thank you so much. I love you, Stan. <laughs>